<laughs> thank you, Ramu sir, and uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Parkavi ma'am, for such okay. a lovely introduction. I wish uh, ma'am would introduce me everywhere I go. Uh, she's introduced me like that. It'd be nice if my wife was also there. Some good things she would have heard about me for a change. <laughs> so, thank you so much, ma'am. I'd like to thank the chairman of uh, Erod Branch, C. A. Balamurugan sir, of Tirupur Branch, C. A. Ramu sir, and uh, Salem Branch, C. A. Parkavi ma'am for uh, inviting me and uh, inviting me as a speaker at this very, very prestigious program today. Coincidentally, when we planned this program, speaking about e-assessment from October 2019, so almost one year now, I've been talking about this, saying that it is coming. So when we discussed e-assessment, there is a lot of uh, pickup now, almost everywhere I've been speaking in India. So when Ramu sir and I were speaking, we said we will do this program. At that time, when we initially conceptualized this idea, we were not aware that the Honorable Prime Minister is going to come and make a grand announcement about the e-assessment. But uh, lucky for all the members here and for us that just two days back, transparent taxation, honoring the honest, like that one scheme was launched by our Honorable Prime Minister, the very gala launch. I'm sure many of you must have uh, watched it, the, how he had done it online. It was telecast everywhere. This announcement is a game changer. Trust me when I say that it is a game changer. And in fact, last week, just last week, I was in conversation with the finance ministry and I had given a lot of recommendations. They had reached out and they asked for suggestions saying, can you give us suggestions on this e-assessment? So a list of suggestions I had given. In fact, whatever I had spoken at the branches and what the members had voiced their concerns, I had managed to incorporate all of that and I gave that as suggestions. I'm very happy to say a lot of those suggestions have now been incorporated. You must have seen a lot of notifications have been coming in the last two days, where a lot of uh, the regular wards have now been converted into regional e-assessment units. A lot of transfers have happened. A lot of rules and uh, guidelines have been laid down as to how this e-assessment should be done. So even though today's program, we are going to try to cover what are the changes in the ITR also, my primary focus is going to be on e-assessment because, ladies and gentlemen, take it from me. This is going to completely change how you and I need to approach our assessment. You see, tax is the bread and butter for almost all of us. 90% of chartered accountants in India, we do tax. Audit is usually considered to be something that complements your tax. So, statutory audit, even though it is important, tax is the primary guideline factor because whether it be it income tax return filing, be it advising your clients, be it appeal and representation, or most importantly, assessment. We are the only people who do it. Sometimes lawyers also come into the picture. So when there is going to be a major change like this, it is a structural reform. That means it is going to impact all of us. Let us understand how the scheme is going to impact us and how we need to be prepared for the same. How we need to be prepared for the same. I will now share my PPT on the screen. And uh, I suggest at any point of time through my presentation, you may have some doubts and uh, we will definitely discuss the doubts, but keep putting the doubts in the chat box or the Q&A box if it is there. Please keep on typing out whatever doubts that you have so that at any point of time, if we want to pause and take up the questions, we will have. Sometimes when I'm on one slide, you may have a doubt. If you want to wait to the end of the program, other doubts will come, that first doubt will be forgotten. So whenever the moment you have a doubt, immediately please type it out and I'm more than happy to take it up. I'll be here fully with the members. So let us discuss this and understand what is the impact of this e-assessment. So let's get started. E-assessment and assessment procedures now go hand in hand. So what is e-assessment? Why is it so important? You see, you go back to the origin. Last year, in 2019, in the budget, the Honorable Finance Minister announced that there will be a e-assessment going to be done. It is coming soon, like that she had announced. From October 2019 of last year, the process had started. From October till April, there was a pilot project being done. What is pilot project? That means that just for the purpose of testing out how successful e-assessment is, they picked up some assessees at random across India and they tried out the e-assessment. I was involved both in the department side and as an auditor, I had the opportunity to be very closely involved with the implementation and how it was being done. 
and the department had taken it very very seriously but you have to first understand the basis and the honorable prime minister also in his address two days back he had touched upon this where he specifically had said that one critical change why they are bringing this yes technology but they wanted to start reducing the interaction between the assessee or the authorized representative and the department so earlier earlier it was completely a manual process things have now moved on you see now it is going to be a faceless assessment yes it is faceless is that all no the most critical point is we have to understand where we are going and where we were before manual assessment was simple you used to get a notice or your client will get the notice he will bring it to you sir notice on the sir other panel sir so you will take up the notice you will take up the hearing you will go and meet the officer you will give all your submissions you will argue the case everything you will do and finally they will accept ah, okay fine either they will give you a, make an addition and pass the order or they will agree with you and they'll give you a clean order then what happened is for the last two years you might have seen when you log into that income tax portal on the top there will be something called e proceeding e proceeding on tab was there if you click on that you will have certain options as a spend year 1819 order has been passed what do you want to do or the notice has been raised on you and you can select that and you can reply online if you want you can give a partial response or a full response like that you used to have a drop down box you can type out your response upload your documents and submit it but suppose suppose you want to do it physically they gave you the option where you used to have one box it used to say do you want to do this assessment physically you can select yes or no so if you select yes means it will be done only physically but even if you select no and even if you don't select anything the very same assessing officer whoever was doing your manual scrutiny whoever was doing your manual assessment that same fellow only will do it so your client who is in salem tirchur or anywhere else whatever place that they are from chennai uh, cochin any city that you can think of the assessing officer used to be only in that same city but now what is going to happen in email assessment also the very same officer it is there online you have to submit your documents online even otherwise it is the same physical officer the same officer in trishur the same officer in tirupur the same assessing officer in salem wherever you think of that is the same person doing this email assessment it is called email assessment do not confuse it with e assessment so in this email assessment what used to happen tell you practical cases where i used to upload everything i used, i did not select physical in some cases i used to put only online cases i used to upload the documents i used to get a call from the assessing officer sir abhishek sir nareya vandrenga sir edhi sir online la pandrenga you you come home come to my uh, office and you discuss it so i used to go to his office and i used to whatever i uploaded same thing i used to give to him in some cases i used to appear physically i used to argue the case they'll accept my submissions then what they will do is they'll say abhishek sir ellame kudutitenga but what you do is you go back to your office you scan and you upload it also just for record purpose so what used to happen even if you had selected the online process it was being done physically you knew who the assessing officer was first case scenario you can go and discuss the case also with him under the e assessment this has come transform what do i mean by completely transform uh, i request everybody to please uh, put your uh, microphone on mute because sometimes it gets uh, it disturbs all the other participants yes. so under e assessment i told you it is faceless but it is also jurisdiction free it is not only faceless not only you cannot see the assessing officer but it is jurisdictional free so your assessee in salem your assessee in tirupur your assessee in chennai trishur or cochin wherever he is he will no longer be assessed by a nursing officer there he will be assessed by some person in delhi bombay calcutta up you never know where he is from so you do not know who the assessing officer is assessing officer does not know who you are other than the basic documents given and you have to just argue your entire case from 1st of april 2020 it was supposed to be mandatory and it was mandatory but lucky for all of us what happened was this uh, corona came in 
So when Corona came in, CBDT gave a specific direction, saying what? Saying that now that Corona is there, don't pass any adverse orders, don't send any adverse notices, go easy on the SSEs. So because of that direction, many of us did not receive the new e assessment notice. Some of us have got, some of my clients have already got the e assessment notices. But on a large basis, many people did not receive. They are not even aware that from 1st April, we have already started e-assessment. From 1st April 2020, e-assessment has been happening. But many people not aware because no notices have come. That is why the Honorable Prime Minister, two days back, he took up this situation as an opportunity to launch the e-assessment on a grand scale. So he said transparent taxation, honoring the honest. So they brought about this e-assessment scheme. So what is this e-assessment scheme? How does it work? Before, before we start to understand what the e-assessment scheme is, we have to discuss one very, very critical point. And this is a pain point because wherever I have spoken, be it down south, across the four states in South India, or even if I have spoken in Delhi, Bombay, Maharashtra, one common issue that most auditors have is this. And I want to request you all to work on this. The point is, very often, we give our own email ID or our own phone number as the contact details for the client. So when you go into that income tax portal, when you log in, one window will come. Please confirm your address. Normally, most of us will press X or we'll press skip and we'll go off. But earlier, earlier, and even in my office, we did this. We used to give our phone number or our email ID for the client. Why we used to do that? Because clients normally, they do not keep track of the income tax notices. If it comes to us, at least we'll always check what notice it is. It is it important? Is it not important? Is it really a demand has come? Or is it a notice that has come? Is it just a mail saying that we have received your idea return? All of that we used to check and we used to decide. But few years back, there was a limitation that came saying that against one email ID or against one phone number, maximum 10 PAN numbers only you can register. Maximum 10 PAN numbers only you can register. Most of us will have at least more than 10 clients. Let's assume you have 100 clients. In your office, you have 100 clients. So you have registered all 100 clients as your email ID and your mobile number. What would have happened is only for 10 clients you would have got the communication. The first 10, whoever you registered, only their communication will be coming to you. The balance 90 you will not be receiving. Till now it did not matter. Why? Because whether it is manual assessment or whether it is email assessment, even if the mail is sent by email, even if it is sent by message, I used to get a physical copy of the notice. So I had no problem at all. That assessing officer, he'll be kind enough to send me a notice. He used to call me also in some cases, sir, Abhishek, this case has come. I think it is your assessee only. Can you come and uh, handle the notice? I used to say, okay, sir, I'll come. But now, under the assessment, remember, no physical communication at all. The communication will be received only in three ways. Either by email, it will come through a mobile application, which is still in development. Third is by messages, either SMS or WhatsApp also. WhatsApp also from the income tax department will serve as a completion of the communication. So ladies and gentlemen, why this is again important. If we do not update to the client's email ID, do not even receive the communication. Department will say that we have already served. It's not our fault that he has registered more than 10 PAN numbers to one email ID. As far as we are concerned, we have served the notice. He has not responded. Order has been passed saying ex party, you please pay the demand. You want to fight it out, you go on appeal. So this will be the approach of the department now. So it plays a very, very critical role in reminding us that now please update for each and every client, you put their own email ID and their own mobile number put their own email ID, their own mobile number, so that the communication comes correctly. In my office, we have told all the clients, for every client, we have put their own email, their own mobile, and we have told them very clearly, whatever communication you are getting from the department, you send it to me. Because some clients, they don't know anything. 
so they won't send anything so for them it is easy you just tell them sir you please send your there are some other clients who actually don't know anything but they think they know everything when they come to filing with you they will tell you sir uh, this 87a is it's applicable sir you are a company sir you do not have 87a you have to tell them they'll say no 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 87a attp you give me sir you are not a senior citizen sir you cannot get oh, no you please take the act and see so these kind of things people certain clients are there you have some characters where they think they know the law but actually they don't know so in these cases what they will do they will say that i received a mail it is nothing it is just an intimation under 1431 they'll say i'll take care of this but actually in that intimation they would have adjusted some other demand against it and refund would have gone less only when the refund comes to his bank account he'll call you what abhishek you are not doing anything my refund has not come he says sir did you get intimation yeah yeah i got intimation sir why you did not send it to me no no you get me the refund abhishek that's all i want but they'll not send the other documents similarly if they get a notice also they'll think it is something else they will not send it to you so make it a blanket rule for all your clients convert first all of the accounts into their own email id and their own mobile number then tell each and every client whatever mail you are getting from the income tax whatever message you are getting you please send it to us any of your clients may be getting because my clients are getting since i have told them you forward every message fake messages are coming today refund of 53000 due please click this link if you want that refund like that uh, many fake messages are going today many clients they are getting tempted to click also and they are saying abhishek uh, i want that refund i said sir in your case no tax is there sir because you had tax payable self assessment tax you paid at the time of filing how can you expect refund of 53000 so no no i got a message i clicked the button so people get tempted they get cheated or they don't get the communication at all ensure that they forward everything to you and they check once with you that is the check for this because under e assessment no other form of communication will be there no physical if you fail to get the communication you fail to respond to the communication they will pass a best judgment assessment order you don't have a solution you cannot approach anybody physically to explain the case at all it is the, the days are gone now so now let us get into e assessments you see the scheme is empowered by a new section which is coming to the act called section 143 3a what is the section the full section is here i am not going to read it but there are three very very critical areas which i have highlighted in yellow and i have underlined it also you see they have said eliminating the interface between the assessing officer and the assessee in the course of proceedings to the extent technologically feasible so technology is a backbone we all know that very clear now next to point optimizing utilization of resources through economies of scale and functional specialization very very interesting point functional specialization we have to discuss this third one introducing a team based assessment with a dynamic jurisdiction team based assessment with a dynamic jurisdiction this is also very clear important dynamic jurisdiction we already understood as a cn e road as a cn seller He is no longer going to be assessed by a assessing officer there. It will be from anywhere else in India. Not only that, it will never be the same person. For example, I am an assessee based in Chennai. My assessing officer this year is in Delhi. So will it continue be continue to be the same Delhi officer every year? No. For every assessment, it will keep on changing. And yesterday, it has been announced. It is a computer generated process. In fact. Uh, i had shared a link i'm not sure if people had seen yesterday day before yesterday evening on the eve of the announcement or rather after the announcement i had opportunity to go live in national tv along with the principal commissioner of tamil nadu uh, mr ramakrishnan where we had discussed the scheme and over there he made it very clear that it is going to be now a computerized process nobody is going to manually allocate the cases so nobody knows where it has gone also even the principal commissioner says i will also not know i will know number of cases they are doing but i will not know who is doing what case i don't know so therefore nobody has control over this giant dynamic jurisdiction but what is this team based assessment how does team based assessment work next slides will give you a clarity you see the first thing the structure structure of ess national e assessment center and regional e assessment center you see till day before yesterday there are only eight regional e assessment centers There was a national e-assessment center in the center, which is in Delhi. 
Then you have eight regional ESS pen centers spread across India. It was all the four metros that is Delhi, Bombay, uh, Calcutta, and Chennai. Also, they added Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, and Patna. So these are the eight places which were considered to be regional ESS. Ramu sir, just two hours back, he sent me a message of a 200 page notice which has come from CBDT. 200 pages. What is there in this 200 pages? Now, slowly they are notifying more regional ESS centers. So, what is this REAC? What is this NEAC? This NEAC, the National ESS Center, is the all controlling unit sitting in Delhi. They are going to be the nerve center for this entire function of this e assessment, the entire success of it hinges on this national e assessment center. What does the regional e assessment center do? Now, there are going to be regional e assessment centers. The idea, the plan of the income tax is to convert all physical offices, whatever they have, the income tax building which is there in Salem, Tirupur, or Erode, or Chennai, or wherever you can think of, any of these places, there is a there is an income tax building or multiple income tax buildings. Chennai, we have three buildings. So, what are they going to do with that? If everything is going to Delhi, what are the people doing there? Real estate value, what are you going to do with those buildings? So, all of those buildings now, they will be converted into regional e assessment centers. Everyone will be assessing. They will continue to be assessing officers. They will continue to do assessment, but not for assessees in that same city. For whoever the NEAC randomly allocates to your assessing officer sitting in Salem, that case, he will be doing the assessment from Salem. So now, there are four critical new units established under this e-assessment. First is an assessment unit. Second is a verification unit. Is a technical unit. And the fourth is something called a review unit. So what does each of these units do? What does each of these units do? Let us understand because it's very, very important. The assessment unit, the first unit is the main unit is the assessment unit. They identify the issues pertaining to the assessment. They seek information on issues and analyze information. And they draft the assessment order and send it to the assessor. The verification unit on the other hand, they will conduct inquiries, examine books of accounts, record statements through video conference. What do I mean by this? The verification unit, please note this, verification unit is the only unit in the entire e-assessment proceedings that will have any sort of face yeah. time with the assessee. Nobody else will have any face-to-face -face time with the assessee. So suppose there is a situation where cross-examination needs to be done. There is another party involved in the transaction that the income tax is relying on the information. You also want to cross-examine him. Department also wants to cross-examine him. How are you going to do it under ESS? So if you are asking also sitting in Delhi, can you be expected to take a flight and go to Delhi and do it? Not possible. So these scenarios, they will do video conferencing, either through a WebEx portal like this, or a Skype portal, or Zoom. One of these will be used, and they will record statements. The entire proceedings that is happening here will be recorded, and it will be sent as a summary. So the very Unit, they will explain, they will look at the books, they will conduct inquiries, and they will record the statements for video conference. Then, a very, very, very important unit, and this is a deal breaker. This is a deal breaker for the department called a technical unit. Earlier, before this e assessment came, and we are all aware of this as charter accountants, assessing officers used to be transferred like your left, right, and center whenever the deal required. They used to be transferred. There have been cases that I have seen where assessing officers they have been sitting in exemption ward, exemption ward, doing trust cases, society cases. They have been doing for 15 to 20 years. They have been doing. Suddenly they are transferred to a non-corporate ward or corporate ward. This gentleman he has no idea about accounting standards. He has no idea about capital gains. He doesn't know anything other than taxation of exemption ward, whatever trust is there, etc. He has been transferred one month before time barring date. He has 150 cases he has to complete. In his ward, he has 150 cases. So in less than a month or month and a half, this assessee or rather this assessing officer, 
he has to understand accounting standards he has to learn and understand accounting standards he has to learn capital gains then he has to learn and understand each assessy what are the issues then he has to analyze the issues give a hearing understand everything then pass a effective assessment order making the additions is it even practically possible is it practically possible yes or no it was being done i'm sure the answer will be no if anybody says yes then you must be like vishnu where you have hundreds of hands or hundreds of heads and you can find out the answer because it is one month it is impossible for a person to take so much learning it is just not possible even if you and i had to do it it will be very very difficult let alone learn the subject and also understand each 150 assessees what the issues are and pass assessment order so what used to happen in this case we'll take an example to take capital gains under section 54f now i'm asking you a question you can type your answer in the chat box under 54f what does the 54f provision say it says after selling a long term capital asset as the other than a residential house property you must reinvest in what you must reinvest in a residential house provided you do not own more than one residential house provided you do not own more than one residential house i will give you a scenario as he has sold a land as he he has sold a land now he is reinvesting in a house this as he what what he has he already has one house but in the same building the same building that one house is actually two units two apartments two apartments two flats are there next to each other same floor he has purchased the next floor next apartment he has joined them together and he is saying i have only one house so i am asking you a question you can answer it in the chat box is this one house or is this two houses for the purpose of 54f will you consider this to be one house or will you consider this to be two houses can i get some answers see ashri there says one house ramu sir says two two houses is two kitchens ananta sainam sir any more answers so this is one house sarana and two houses prita one rajendran sir one house ram murthy sir one house ayam pillai sir says two asudev sir says two Agarinder says one, Jairam sir says two. Okay, so now it's very clear from your chat box that it is not easy to answer this. There is no one correct answer because all of us are chartered accountants, all of us are practicing for a very long time, and all of us are dealing with capital gains issues. And we ourselves have so many difference in opinion. Some of us saying one, some of us saying two, some of us saying one in certain conditions, two in certain conditions. Common kitchen. Whether two separate residential uh, door numbers, corporate tax unit, or whether it is a technical or is it a unit or a house, so now so many complexities are there between us itself as chartered accountants. For that assessing officer, will really he understand? Within one and a half months, will he be able to give a proper assessment order in these cases? So what did the assessing officer do normally till now? He used to do. He used to say, okay. what do i do in this case he will ask the assessee or he will ask the assessing officer in the next door but that time it may be ego issue he cannot ask the assessee because assessee is own case there may be bias he cannot ask the assessing officer in the next door because ego will be there certain issues will be there personally between them then what will he do normally he used to ask that assessee's auditor only or worst case scenario some other auditor that he is a friend with he used to call and he used to ask so it's fair to say the department side was little ill equipped when it came to situations like this the assessing officers were little challenged practical scenarios they were challenged the real answer to the question that i asked you depends on each state in andhra there are certain decisions saying that you must not allow if it is two separate houses there are some decisions saying 
as long as there is one entry gate as long as there is one common entry gate that is enough there are some other decision saying what you look at the act what it says it says that you must not own more than one residential house it does not say one residential unit so even if you have two units and you join them it is considered to be one house only there are other cases which says that you have to check what is the now whether it is a two separate deeds or whether it's two separate registrations etc so there are a lot of complexities but by and large by and large the answer to this question is be liberal there is a old decision in capital gains called bajaj kempo where they says when it comes to reinvestment you must be liberal you must be liberal to the assessee allow as much as you can but but if for example this assessing officer was based out of andhra if he asked the assessee or he asked any other auditor they will naturally say that sir you can allow it's a, it's not one unit it's just one residential house so even if there are two units okay but if he knows the law he knows the act if he knows that there is a recent judgment in his town saying that it will not be allowed even if you join the two houses also it will be considered to be two separate houses then he could have made a addition sir okay capital gains i gave you a debatable issue what about some complex situation like transfer pricing or icds or accounting standard many times we have seen poor assessment orders being passed because the assessing officer is not aware of the provisions we cannot blame him in one one month he cannot understand entire international taxation in one month he cannot understand entire accounting standard years 31 32 33 when i read those kind of accounting standards 30 31 32 every time i read it i feel like i'm reading a new standard so they are all complex only each of them practically they are complex so you cannot expect the assessing officer to be able to pass a quality order but what has changed now in that this e assessment scheme the e assessment scheme there is no a technical unit this technical unit will have experts in each area you want to come to accounting standards they'll have a team of experts it's a transfer pricing they'll have a team of experts capital gains they'll have a team of experts so now all the assessing officer has to do he is sitting in the last month he has to pass order two houses one house he does not know 54f can he allow earlier he has to figure it out pass the assessment order now the assessing officer all he has to do he has to write to the technical unit sir these are the facts of the case whether i can allow 54f when he has two houses even if it is joined can i allow it it will go to the technical unit technical unit will see the facts then they will see the latest law they will see all the latest decisions then they will say yes okay you can allow it no problem or no you should not allow it you should disallow it there's a recent decision in andhra your assessee is based out of andhra you please make the addition so now a deal breaker it's completely changing how department approach their assessment so where the assessing officer is incapable or unaware or he needs any technical support a technical unit will answer all his questions pertaining to that that is a new unit which is going to be very very important there is one more unit called the review unit what is the review unit see the review unit is also going to be a deal breaker and why i will tell the i represent i i specialize in income tax appeals and uh, i'm sure many of you here know that and uh, many of you here have also uh, referred cases to me which i have appeared at the itat level one very common thing that i do at the itat level not only me other advocates or chartered accountants also who appear at the itat level they will do this we never start our appeals we never start our appeal on the merits of an issue you see there are times cases which i have handled where there have been fundamental issues in the entire additions made and every addition was completely correct whatever the department made the addition was completely correct however however the technical point is the main for example i will give you a practical case in one assessee's case the reopening was done reopening was done additions made to the tune of several crores and what happened order passed and uh, demand 
they are already calling the auditor sir ask your rc to pay we will attach the bank account we are going on appeal you pay 20% etc the gentleman had gone the auditor had gone to the cit appeals also cit appeals also confirmed whatever he said finally he wanted to go to it it so he referred the case to me and uh, when we prepared the grounds we started with the very first when it comes to reopening of an assessment beyond the period of 4 years there are certain conditions that you have to comply with for example i am reopening beyond a period of 4 years that means i must the income sought to be evaded must be minimum rupees 1 lakh i must get the concerned approvals from the concerned principal commissioner or joint commissioner if i want to reopen beyond 4, four years and the department should also prove they should be able to prove that there is a failure on part of the assessee to disclose the information now my assessee's case or rather the case that was referred to me at right every addition made on merit is in the favor of the department only but when drafting the assessment order that assessing officer made a mistake what he did income sought to be evaded exceeds 1 lakh yes can he demonstrate the assessee to disclose yes he was able to demonstrate however this assessing officer he had forgotten to get the approval from the joint commissioner where reopening is beyond 4 years we should get the approval from the joint commissioner or a principal commissioner we want to reopen beyond 4 years he had not got the approval so when we went on appeal all i said is one point all i said is your lordship as per law you should have got the concerned approvals if he is reopening beyond 4 years it does not matter the merits you should not be allowed please quash the order the court asked him have you got the approvals he said no sir we have not got the approvals case over he did not even examine the merits of the case it was a horrible case if we grant in the merits no chance assess he would have won the case but purely on a technical point he has forgotten to got the approvals he has forgotten to write it in the assessment order that he has got the approvals because of that the department lost the case not only this several instances are there there on technical points as is win cases addition is made under section 1431 on a debatable issue is it allowable 1431 is for intimation is for making adjustments on prima facie issues one assessee's case that we handle an intimation came they disallowed bad debts can anybody disallow bad debts on a prima facie basis cannot be done when you went to itit you just simply said a simple point you can 1431 is only for prima facie adjustments if you want to disallow bad debts please hear out the assessee allow me to present the case allow me to refute the facts here you are not given me any opportunity quash the order order quashed and nothing time barred they cannot reopen also if they want the case closed so we always start off with the technical points because many assessing officers either they are not aware or they are not qualified enough or their english is not that good so when they pass the assessment orders there are a lot of practical errors things that get missed out things that get missed out so the assessment order ends up being bad which ends up being good for us because on appeal we will easily win the case because of that but now under the eas assessment scheme that also has changed what are they doing no department is saying saukat ali sir request you to please mute uh, mute your microphone i think your audio is being heard okay sir okay thank you thank you thank you sir okay sir so as i was saying now under the e assessment scheme this thing has completely changed they now have a new unit called a review unit like i said technical unit now there's a review unit the only job of this review unit is every assessment order that is being sent to them they will look at it they will check whether it is in consonance with everything oh you have not explained clearly it should be a speaking order there are multiple cases where we say it is a non speaking order you please quash it it used to be quashed they will say it's not a speaking order you have not expressed clearly why you are making the additions please change it or in the case that i gave you an example the reopening is done under 148 before they pass the assessment order they will ask have you got the concerned approvals no i have not got immediately get the approvals immediately get the approvals immediately finish the process again before you pass the assessment order so the review unit will give similar suggestions to the assessment uh, assessing officer assessing officer 
he will incorporate this and then only pass the assessment order. So you can see now the four units that I'm talking about. Remember, I told you two points that I will explain. Functional specialization, that is what the technical unit does. Every area, every function of the income tax, be it accounting, transfer pricing, capital gains, other sources, business income, whatever it is, they will have specialized experts in that field. Similarly, I told you one more point. Team-based assessment. What is team-based assessment? Four units are there with their own teams, their own experts over there. What will these four units do? They are doing the same function. All what we just discussed, all of these functions was being done by a single assessing officer. One assessing officer used to do all of the activities that we just discussed. So therefore, this is a team-based assessment. It is now being done by four different people. So therefore, the more people are there, the more likely the order will be clean. The order will be better. Therefore, the final order that is being passed, it will be stronger. Department has taken a stand. The government has taken a stand saying, even if we lose a case on appeal, it is okay. Let us not lose cases on simple matters like the order is not drafted correctly or that Asing Asad did not know the law. Let us fight the case on the merits and let, the, let us lose the case. Like that, the department have taken a stand. These four units are going to ensure that that happens. So now we have understood what each unit does. I think uh, some annotation has happened. So now we have understood what the four units does. How will the procedure be? We are all handling cases in the income tax. Now the assessment notice will start coming. How will we handle the cases? The next slide, it might seem complex on primary viewing. Don't get scared. It is only because uh, it seems complex. Once I explain it to you, it will be clear. See, in this slide, what I have done is, I have tried to concise the entire e-assessment procedure into a single flowchart so that you can understand how it works. So therefore, let us try and understand the procedure. Now, can you see my arrow? Can you see my cursor? The arrow over there. Can you see my cursor? Can I get a yes? Yes, sir. We are, we are seeing. Okay, great, great, great. So, if you see my cursor, you have to follow it. So many boxes are there, so many lines are there. It might seem confusing, but once I explain it, you will be able to understand better. You see, in the middle of everything, you have the NEAC. So, how does this E assessment work? The NEAC will send a notice, they will serve a notice. You see, on number one over here. The NEAC will serve a notice to the SSC. The SSC he will submit a response to the NEAC. The NEAC then they will assign the case to a assessment unit. So this will now be done by a computerized process. Till now we were thinking whether it will be manual or computer. How we didn't know. Now two days back clarity has come that it will be on a computerized random basis. So the NEAC will ensure who the assessment unit is. Now the next important thing over here, there were a lot of cases where even if it is not politically influential, there are cases where the SSE may have been an influential person. So if a assessing officer in Chennai is seeing the, the case of maybe a political influential person in Chennai, then it's highly possible that he will be scared to make some additions because of the political influence. Not only a politician, but some other things also where he is a corporate person or he is a huge personality in the city. There is a pressure. If he does something, his image will be affected, etc. Not only that, there have been cases where gundas are there, mafia. So where Asing officer, he wants to make three additions in that assessee's case. By evening, when he comes to his house, there will be three gundas waiting outside, saying three additions, I will send three people for you. Like that, they will say. So these are all, might sound funny, but all practical issues, what, that, what has actually happened. So under this e-assessment scheme, that is all gone. So no longer do they have to worry about any, any sort of influence even in that city. So if you, even if it's a gunda's case, assing officers make an addition, where will the Gunda send a person under e assessment? He does not know who the assing officer is. Whether he will send to Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, nobody. He does not know. So therefore, 
under this e assessment scheme nec will assign the case to assessment unit then assessment unit they have got the case they will look through whatever information the assessor has submitted they will check oh these are all the information then they will say no no this is not enough i want to see more information please get me more information so here the assessment unit please follow the arrow or the cursor they will say request for in information 4a the assessment unit will request for more information to the nes the nes again they will send it back to the assess you see the assessment unit does not interact with the assess at all the assessment unit asks for more information to the nes the nes in turn will send it to the assess so assess now he will prepare whatever additional information he will send it back again to the nes not to the assessment unit the nes only will forward it back to the assessment unit from assessment unit they've got the more information they are going to it you know, no this is not correct i want to cross examine you call the tahsildar i want to speak to the tahsildar i have seen the adangal i have seen the chitta this gentleman is saying that he is growing agricultural income he is growing agricultural crops i want to really check if it is truthful so now here assessment unit will request for a verification please follow my arrow 4b he requests for a verification to the nes saying i want to cross examine the tahsildar who is handling the case of this agricultural wherever this agricultural unit is there for the assess nes will allot a verification unit they will say this verification unit i am allotting now this case to please verify the matters it could be uh, in this case cross examination of tahsildar it will be done through video conferencing assess can also be present so here if you see assessment unit has nothing to do with this only the verification unit will do the cross examination assessee can also be present and he can also do a cross exam there can be cases where the details are so voluminous i have so much information to be submitted to the assessment unit i am not able to scan and upload it. assessment unit can request verification to the nes nes in this situation they can say your assessee in salem who has to be who has to verify so much details you request for a verification so verification unit will physically do it in salem itself in salem itself there will be one assessing officer who will be tasked with verifying whatever details assessee has then he will prepare a report and he will send it back to the assessment unit so he will not send it to the assessment unit he will send the report to the nes the nes in turn again they will forward it to the assessment unit so now assessment unit they wanted more information they have got it they wanted verification to be done verification sir then he is saying no no there is also 54 deficiency issue two houses i don't know whether it should be one house or two houses i want technical assistance so assessment unit now under 4c if you see the arrow they will request for technical assistance to the nes nes will send it to the capital gains unit sir will do your issue go to the capital gains unit for accounting standard unit you go to the technical uh, unit for accounting standard so they will allot who is the technical unit that has to give advice technical unit they will prepare a report and they will send it back to the assessee sir these are all our suggestions in your case 54f do not allow please make addition in your assessee's region the case is against you make the addition so they will send the suggestions back to the nes nes i think they will forward it to the assessment unit now assessment unit what did they they wanted more information they have got they wanted verification to be done verified they wanted technical assistance they have got technical assistance can he pass the assessment order yes he can but he will pass what is known as a draft assessment order the assessment unit will pass what is known as a draft assessment order this draft assessment order will be sent to the nes the nes then they will send it to the review unit remember we discussed the review unit where they will check if the assessment order has been drafted correctly so the review unit they will check i uh, whether everything is correct yes 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 it is correct it is correct yes okay no 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 this is wrong please make the changes so they will suggest review unit will suggest modifications or suggestions to the nes nes again they will send it back to the assessment unit the review unit has given these suggestions please incorporate so they will either choose to incorporate it or reject it and then they will finally pass again what is known as a draft assessment order to the nes 
Why is it called a draft list? I'll tell you. Because before the finalization of order, they will issue a show cost notice to the assessor. And this was a major pain point that I had raised here. When they were formulating the ESS point scheme, I had raised this point very, very critically. I had to give you an example of one case that I had. And this, I'm sure, this is not an issue that only I have faced. Many of you would have faced the same issue, I am very certain. Where this case that I handled, during the course of the entire assessment, I think, in fact, this assessee is from uh, Salem only. During the course of the entire assessment, the assessing officer, he had checked so many facts. Then finally, he wanted to make an addition pertaining to capital gains. So he's asking for all details. Give me DMAT documents. Give me your share certificate. Give me this. Give me that. So everything I was giving. So we had prepared the assessee beforehand. What we said, first case scenario, they will disallow your exemption under section 1038. You'll be prepared for that. Assessee also said, okay. Finally, after almost eight or nine hearings, assessment order was passed. When the assessment order was passed, two additions were made. First addition, he has disallowed your exemption under section 1038. Okay, we were prepared. But he has made another addition saying, as he has not been able to explain the source of how he purchased those properties. So if he has purchased so many capital gains, uh, sorry, so many properties during the year, this sale also, if you consider, it is not adequate for him to purchase that. He has not explained the source. He has made addition. Assisi is a shell shock. Assisi is saying, sir, throughout the entire assessment proceedings, not a single show cause notice was issued to me regarding the addition made for source. It was never even discussed during the course of the assessment proceedings. But suddenly when the assessment order is passed, he is making addition on this point. How can he do that? Is it even proper? Now you may say, Abhishek, fight it on appeal. Uh, you are an expert in appeals, you will just fight it in appeals. Sure, sir, I will fight it in appeals. But what if the 20% demand is there? No, we have to pay. If you add the source, the amount became extremely high. So additions became high. Similarly, demand also became high. Assi is not able to afford paying even 20% for a state. So they are attaching his bank account. They are freezing the money. They are saying you cannot do any transactions. You please pay the 20% demand. All of these things are happening. So therefore, there was a mistrust. In the case that I told you, the assessing officer has gone behind the back of the assessee. In appeal, we may win it. But till that appeal gets posted, assessee is not able to use his bank account. For everything, we cannot use influence and go and request the principal commissioner or chief commissioner and say, sir, in this case, you please help. So we have to be practical. And this was one of the major suggestions. I made. And luckily they have uh, adopted it. So once the assessing officer prepares a draft assessment order, I'm getting some echo. Palani Sami sir? Ah, okay. I think he has muted it himself. So uh, as I was saying, now under the ESS scheme, once the review unit also sends the suggestions, after all the four units finish also, there is only a draft assessment order because they will send a show cost notice to the SSE saying we are going to make all of these additions. We are making addition under section 1038, we are disallowing. We are also making addition in source. Now at this point, I can refute. I can say, why you are making addition under source? You have never given me any hearing. Do not make that addition. Department can still proceed and say, okay, okay, we'll still make the addition. But it will appeal, it will be very, very easy for me to win the case. I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to prove anything. So this new issue of a show cost notice before the final assessment order will definitely be very useful for assessees and for auditors. That there is an opportunity now to hear the case before it is passed. So this is the overall scheme because after everything, the final assessment order will be passed and given to the assessee. I hope this complex chart is now clear because once you understood the flow of events, I'm sure you will be able to appreciate how it works. So it seems to be fairly simple now, I hope. And I will proceed now to the next slide. So let us quickly understand what are the powers of the NEAC. They have the power to send notices. They have the power to assign the cases to each assessment unit. They have the power to allocate cases to the technical unit, verification unit, review unit. That's all we know. They have the power to review the draft assessment order. That also we know. 
they can provide the assessee an opportunity to be heard. Yes, that also, you know. Now, the last one only is important. Transfer to the assessing officer for post-assessment work or during assessment also. Now, you will be shocked. You will be saying, Abhishek, during assessment also, they have power to transfer, you are saying. That means, what is the purpose of this e-assessment scheme? No, sir, it is not that simple. This is how a e e-assessment notice looks like. From NEAC, you will get a notice like this, saying that now normally in the top, you used to have the jurisdiction of your assessing officer. It used to say non-corporate ward, corporate ward, or circle number one, two, three, like that it used to be over here. Now it is only from the NEAC. The notice also, you have the new section over here. And finally, down also, when signing off, normally that assessing officer's name will come, his ward will come. Now it will simply state the notice or the submission is from the NEAC. So otherwise, it is more or less identical. The notice is identical. So now many of you will ask the question, what does my jurisdictional assessing officer do? There's a gentleman sitting in Salem, gentleman sitting in Chennai, and uh, he has uh, passed his IRS exam after great, great difficulty. He's rejected IAS, he's rejected IPS, he's taken IRS. Or after 20 years, he has been promoted to assessing officer after being an inspector. What are these people going to do? What is their role? So as I told you, till day before yesterday, we were not clear what is going to happen to them. Day before yesterday, a lot of updates have come where they are converting each area into a regional e-assessment unit. So therefore, they will continue to be assessing officers, but not for the assessees in their jurisdiction. For whatever case is being allotted to them, they will be the assessing officers. What will they do for the local assessees? Any collection of demand, demand they will do, they will call them, sir, this due is there, please ask your client, client to pay, all of that they will do. Give effect to appellate dollars. This is very important. Yeah, I think this is a case from Salem, actually, where Salem Sri Vilas Chit Funds, there was a case. This was picked up in the pilot project for the e-assessment. What happened in this case is, I think during the course of assessment, they were not able to submit certain documents to the assessment group. So they wanted a verification unit to step in and give their views. Verification unit was not referred to in this case. Finally, an uh, assessment order was passed, adverse order was passed. So as he had appealed against this case, they, went, they filed a writ to went directly to Madras High Court. Madras High Court said, yes, yes, e-assessment, excellent. Yes, yes, you want to be transparent, very good. However, assessee should not be denied an opportunity. He should have a real chance to be heard. You must allow him to hear the case. So what they said, we will send the ba case back to the assessing officer. But we are sending it to the physical assessing officer. As you can see, the high court has the power to send back the case to the physical officer. Similarly, tribunal also has the power for it to be give a direction saying, let it be done physically. So there is a lot of confusion still. Even though yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, a lot of notices have come over the last two days, there is still a lack of clarity. What if I win a case in appeal? Can I send the case back to the physical officer? Or will it go back to e-assessment only? How will it be done? So I think this is one of the exceptional cases where the case may be referred to a physical officer. Then also you have the last power of your jurisdictional officer to launch prosecution proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, very important power. Because I'd say in 65% or 70% of the cases that we are handling, wherever additions are being made, the assessing officer has the power to launch the prosecution proceedings. By the kindness of their heart, they are choosing not to do the prosecution proceedings. They are not launching it. Department has such wide powers that even if you don't file a return of income, they can launch the prosecution proceedings. But they don't normally do it. But now, human psychology. Physically, there's one officer that you know that your assessee is under his jurisdiction. Earlier, he used to do assessment, he used to do so many other things. Now, so where he will show the power? The one thing that he can do is for prosecution proceedings. I have a feeling, my personal view, not I have not got information or anything from the department. My personal view is, I think the number of prosecution notices 
prosecution cases will go up now. They will start increasing. More, more from the psychological point of view, where I think cussing officers, they will start using this power, which they did not use that much. The prosecution proceedings, I expect, will start going up now. So, one common question. Do I have the power to opt out of the scheme? Is it optional? Sir, there is no option. It is a mandatory scheme. Whoever you are, you have to go under the scheme. Your assessment is no longer option. If you had any doubts, the Prime Minister yesterday has confirmed it. Not only that, there is a new order. New order. And this was a common doubt that many people used to ask me. And uh, I used to say, wherever notices are already issued, things are going on for you. Then in that case, it will continue to be physical. So this was a point that I had asked for clarification. And by notice, the CPDT have now issued a notice saying that, a circular saying that all cases as on 13th of August with immediate effect. This came less than one hour after the Prime Minister had made his announcement. Less than one hour they announced all cases where physical proceedings are going on and an assessment order has not been passed, with immediate effect, they will be transferred to the NEAC. So therefore, if there are any cases that you are handling, you have made 10 appearances, 12 appearances, 40 appearances before the assessing officer, and a assessing officer has heard everything. He was about to pass the assessment order, but lockdown happened because of corona, so he could not pass the order. What happens in that case? Sorry, sir, your efforts are all to waste. Because that case is now transferred to the NEC. So all pending cases also from today, they are all gone to the NEC. You have to do the entire assessment again, whether it was done physically or not. If an assessment order was not passed, then I'm sorry, your assessee has to go back to the NEC for the case, irrespective of any hearings, any submissions you have made. So only the following cases e-assessment is not required where assessment is framed under section 153a or 153c search cases survey cases one very important update earlier survey power used to be with the assessing officer your jurisdictional assessing officer had the power of survey there have been many instances many cases that i've handled even Coimbatur cases i've handled where the assessing officer they used to uh, use this power to maybe I would I don't want to use the word exploit, but sometimes the survey power was used to collect from the SSE. One case that I handle, the SSE there was a high pitched order. There was a highly incorrect assessment order which was passed. The auditor had made the right submissions, but despite his submissions, assessing officer refused to consider because she did not like the auditor of the SSE. She did not like him, so she made all the additions. Then he referred the case to me. And uh, he went to CIT appeals also. Unfortunately, in his case, he got a commissioner who only gives, uh, he only confirms whatever orders that come to him. So he confirmed the order. So CIT appeal also gone. Now earlier, 20% demand was due. As he could not afford to pay the 20%. CIT appeals order over, 100% demand becomes due. On appeal to ITAT, he referred the case to us. So he said, as he cannot pay, he has not paid anything. Assessing officer is putting pressure. So I had made a stay application at the ITA. What happened? I told the assing officer, she started calling me. She said, I heard you have filed the power of attorney at the ITA. Please tell the assessee to pay. I said, ma'am, we have filed the stay application. It is posted next week on Friday. We will, uh, till then you please wait. Whatever the ITA says, we will follow that. If the ITA says we have to pay, I will tell the assessee to pay. So she said, okay, okay. Then she has called the auditor of the assessee. And she has told him, threatened him, saying that if you don't ask the assistant to pay before Friday, I have to meet my targets. If you don't ask the assistant to pay, I will do a survey. The auditor immediately called me. I said, I have posted it for the earliest possible. Earlier than Friday, it is not possible. We will definitely, I will win the case for you at this day and I will get a stay order. But till then, what we should do? Despite saying that, that assessing officer, next day, she has sent to people to the assessee's location for survey. Look at this. She has to meet her targets. High pitched order. I am not even exaggerating. There is no, there is no, all the additions are wrong. All the additions are blatantly wrong. But order passed, demand due. She is putting pressure because targets for her. And she has sent people 
to the house of the assessee for survey or office of the assessee for survey. So when this scenario was there, people were exploiting the power in extraneous situations. Ended up in this case, what we ended up doing is assessee said, sir, please come on a different day. That assessing officer, she called me. She said, I know you are doing it on Friday, but I've sent my people there. Ask the assessee to pay. Otherwise, again, by Friday, I will send people. She said, by Thursday, you have to ask the assessee to pay. If they don't pay, by Friday, I will do it. So I told the assessee to please leave your house immediately. Close the entire thing. That assessee, what he did is he closed the entire house. He locked it. He went to his hometown in Rajasthan. And Friday, the uh, madam realized that uh, the assessee has not paid anything. She immediately sent her persons to the house of the assessee. Everything was closed. She was calling me. At the same time, I was at the ITAT arguing. I requested for a stay. I explained the case. The judges also were kind enough to grant me a stay. And I said specifically there, I said, please, in the court itself, your lordship, give a direction to the department saying any coercive proceedings should be stopped immediately. So immediately, they had made a call to the assessing officer and they stopped the survey. But this is a prime example that I'm giving you, where when your recourse is only to the ITAT or appellate authorities, maybe even the high court, there are certain time restrictions. It is impossible for the SEC or even for me, or even if I think about it, to get a stay before Friday, because all stay applications at the ITAT are only heard on Fridays. They are meant only for that. So whenever stay application is posted, within the next seven to 12 days, the case will be heard. It will never delay for the next 12 days, it will be heard. So generally, assessing officers, they should wait till the application is heard and the stay petition is made. But look at this example that I gave you, practical scenario that I'm telling you, case that I handle, where they use the survey power to meet their targets and to threaten the SSE to pay when there is a state petition pending, not even confirmed. State petition is pending to be heard. Less than uh, three, four days she has to wait, but Madam is not able to wait. So what the e-assessment uh, has done now, they have transferred the survey powers to the investigation ward. So the central circle, will be handling not only search cases, but survey cases also. So survey is also considered to be a very intrusive power. Survey and search cases will be done by the central ward. 144 cases, best judgment assessment. Earlier, it was not part of the scheme. Now it is part of the scheme. One more doubt that I had, and I asked whether 147 reopening cases will form part of the e-assessment scheme or will it be done physically? Day before yesterday, the clarification has done where even 147 cases, reopening cases, that will also be done under the e-assessment scheme only. So till this announcement came, 147 cases were not covered. Till Finance Act 2020, February 1st, 2020, 144 cases were also not covered under e-assessment. It was still put under physical. But now, whether it is best judgment or whether it is reopening, both are covered under the e-assessment scheme. Other situations where e-assessment not required, I already told you when it is set aside, high court or ITAT, they say physically it should be done because in this case it is not correct. Then in that case, it will be done physical assessment. E-assessment will not be done. Next one, where internet connectivity is poor and notified by the principal DJAT. So therefore, uh, your assessee is in Kashmir. We all know Kashmir for almost six months, they did not have any internet. So if your assessee is based out of there, his assessing officer is based out of Chennai and he is sending notices. So please respond. I've already sent you have not respond. Third notice, fourth notice, fifth notice, you have not respond. I'm doing best judgment assessment. So every SSE based out of Kashmir, they would have got best judgment assessment. But reality is they don't even know they are getting notices because no internet. They cannot even send a WhatsApp message where they are going to see whether they are getting notices from income tax. So in these situations, the principal DJIT or the principal commissioner of that region, he can notify it to the NEAC saying there is no internet or there's very poor internet in this area, you cannot do e-assessment here, let it be done physically. So they have the power to do that. One more case, in exceptional circumstances, going to administrative difficulty, principal commissioner of income tax may record his reason for manual assessment and ask it to be done manually for certain cases. Now, some of you may ask, the principal commissioner, my very close friend, can I ask him to do it in my SSE's cases to be done manually? Sure, sir, you can ask him. But all the cases where manual assessment is going to be done, every single case where e-assessment is being converted to manual assessment, 
is being examined by the CBDT. So therefore, every principal commissioner he has to justify. He has to give a long justification why it should not be done in e-assessment, why it should be done physical assessment. So even if he's your friend, he has to justify. If his justification is found to be uh, not satisfactory, then naturally they will take action against him and his promotions, transfers, everything will be affected by this. So therefore, it is a very, very important update over here. So these are the only cases where e-assessment cannot be done. Now finally, what should we do? What should you and I do as auditors? Now this e-assessment has come. How is our approach do we need to change? The first point I already told you, we have to update the contact number and email ID of the client to their own. Don't put your ID. And I think in the chat, some questions have come up on this. I will take it up. I also request, since this is the last slide pertaining to e-assessment, whoever has any doubt relating to e-assessment, please put it in the chat box. Let's take up more questions. The first thing, update your contact details, email ID and number. Second one, get good scanning equipment. It might sound funny, but many of our offices, I'm sure some of you also have this. We have an office boy. What this office boy used to do is we used to send him to income tax. He used to submit the document. He used to get a seal or tapal he used to get there. And uh, he used to get the seal and he used to submit either in the ICAR seva or he used to go to the ward and he used to get a seal and cup. Well, that's all his job was. Today, there is no uh, ICAR seva. There is no EG assessment. Or, there's no assing officer. There's no tapal. Everything has to be submitted online. Ardipan, sir, I request you to please put on mute, sir. Ardipan, sir. I will just try to mute it. Okay, mute it. Thank you. So, these uh, staff that you are having, instead of asking them to go and deliver, now you please train them how to use the scanning equipment in your office. Today, scanning is a very, very important process for this e assessment. Everything you have to scan and do it. And uh, today, mobile phones also you can use for scanning. In good quality mobile phones with the camera itself, you have apps where you can scan the documents. So please train your office staff to be equipped with how to scan documents properly. This is a very, very important point. Improve the quality of drafting and presentation of submissions. We all know, and we used to do this, gone are the days where we go and meet the assigning officer. Very often we used to meet the assigning officer, we used to have a cup of tea with them, have a samosa, have biscuits, argue the case, come back. So this was being done and normally they will say, give a submission. One page we used to give a submission to them and we used to leave. Why? Because face-to-face -face anyway, I've explained the case. There is no face-to-face -face anymore. We heard a lot of things. Many of you would have heard either as a student or when you became a new member, who I should represent in the, uh, when I'm in a discussion or when I'm in a hearing. They will say, you have to go well-groomed. You should wear suit, you should wear tie. You go very clean shaven, don't come with a beard. Groom your hair properly. Sit up straight, look in the eye of the officer when you are answering. All of this you would have heard, keep your chin up. All of these things you would have heard, how you should represent in appeal or how you should represent in a hearing. So all that chin up, the suit, tie, all of that is gone, where you are not going to see the any person at all. So everything that you want should be represented in the piece of paper that you are uploading. So therefore, remember this, whatever, how you used to argue the cases, many places, Especially in Andhra, used to see where the cases people used to argue it in their vernacular. They used to talk in Telugu, they used to argue in Telugu. Even in Tamil Nadu, many officers, they are comfortable in Tamil. So we used to go and argue the case in Tamil. So now, gone. Everything has to be drafted clearly in English. The drafting quality has to be good. The submission quality has to be good. And if it's not good, ladies and gentlemen, your client will be at a loss. Your client will be at a loss. So improve the quality of your drafting. If you are not, uh, you know, you don't think you are equipped enough to do it, there are many people who are doing cases in appeals. Refer it to them. They will be able to draft it for you. You can always share, come into an agreement, sharing of your fees, etc. But the main point is the quality of drafting has to improve by all auditors or by all for all assessees. Otherwise, the case will be lost at that time itself. You will not be able to communicate clearly to whoever is the assessing officer there. Next one, promptly submit all your responses. Today, uh, currently, as per the e-assessment scheme, you have only 15 days time. If you do not submit in 15 days, 
the window will slam shut. You cannot make any submissions beyond the midnight. Midnight of that 15th day, if you miss submitting, gone. Many times in physical assessment, case used to be posted. Let's say case is posted on 16th of August. I am going on 16th of August. On my way to the department, I am getting a call from the house. Abhishek, come home. There's an emergency here. You need some help over here. So I immediately turn my car. I go back to the house. What, what happens? Next day morning, I will go to the officer. I will say, sir, I could not come last night for an emergency. Today, I hear the case. You cannot do that now. So all your submissions, 15 days means in 15 days you have to submit. Otherwise, gone. Your opportunity is lost. We have, uh, I have made a request uh, and uh, as part of All India Taxpayer Association, we have represented even day before yesterday. As I told you, uh, on national TV, I had requested the principal commissioner to increase the time. 15 days time we have for submission. I said, give more time. Give at least 30 days time. Uh, that way the SSE has some time to respond. So this is something we have requested. But as it stands today, you have 15 days time to respond. If you don't respond, window is closed, opportunity gone. And finally, the most important one is take up appeals very seriously. Very often, and I have seen cases where the auditor used to have a comfort with the assessing officer. There have been some cases where addition is made in one SSE. He used to say, sir, sir, you please disallow, sir. Why are you doing it? say, this case, let me make addition. I will, we'll, uh, next case, I will help you like that. As Singh also used to say. So we used to, because to protect our relationship with them, we used to not go on appeal. And I've seen this, especially in Mofasil areas, is a very common thing where people did not go on appeal. They did not prefer to fight the case because they used to salvage the relationship. Today, under e-assessment scheme, there is going to be ambiguity, whether it is your side or whether it's As Singh officer side. The quality of orders may not be good. The additions may be wrong. There may be many instances where it is a poor assessment order or it's a bad assessment order which you want to appeal. You have no relationship to maintain now. So take up appeals very, very seriously. By not going on appeal, the client is on a loss. And as I told you, especially at the ITIT level, every day I'm going, I can tell you very frankly, at least at CIT appeals, it is very much the department officials only who are the judges over there. But at the ITAT, there are professionals who are practicing chartered accountants, who are practicing lawyers. They have all become the judges at the ITAT level. They are sitting there and they are judging the cases. So therefore, they are very reasonable. They understand what are the practical challenges for you and I as a chartered accountant. So they will be favorable to the SSE. They will give many cases in your decision. Many cases I have won because they are practically knowledgeable. They know what is the practical scenario. So by going on appeal, you will definitely win the case. So take up appeal very, very seriously. Take it as a new line of practice. Many chartered accountants and many advocates are there who do appeals. Refer the case to them. Refer the case to them. Come into understanding between you and the chartered accountant. You understand how you want to share the fees or you yourself, you can charge the client. Uh, many of our cases that we are doing, we tell them, you charge your client whatever you want. This is our fees. The auditor is also happy. We don't have any interaction with the client. We just interact with the auditor. So you can come into understanding like that with other auditors. But do not fail going on appeal for your SSE. By not going on appeal, you are doing a disservice to the SSE. So take up appeals as a new line of practice. You can also do the appeals. So take up appeals as a new line of practice. It is an emerging area. And because of e-assessment, I expect the number of appeals will go up substantially, substantially, and you will win the case. As I told you, already three, four cases from the pilot uh, run has already gone on appeal and it has been ruled in favor of the SSE. I'm sure that more cases will also happen like this. So take up appeals very, very seriously. So with this, we have come to the end of e-assessment. Let me take up questions that have come up now in the chat box. I'm just opening the chat box now. You can keep typing questions in the chat box, sir. I'll keep on taking. See, a Jairam, is it possible to provide more than one email ID wherein one will be ours, first will be of the client? Yes, sir. If you log in, you have a primary contact, you have a secondary contact. In the primary contact, give the associate's details. Give his, his phone number, his email ID. In the secondary contact, you can select one option saying this is the representative's number. 
This is the representative's email ID. You can give your email ID, your contact. Having said that, practically many cases that I have handled, even at appeals level, many auditors have told me this. In fact, there is one case where one auditor had referred a case to me. He made a promise. He is promising on his mother to me. He said, Abhishek, in this case, I have not received any communication. Primary contact is the assessee's contact. Secondary contact is the auditor's contact. He is saying that I promise I have not got any communication. I promise assessee has also not got any communication. On time barring date, on 31st of December, this case was time barring. He says, I logged into the e-filing portal. I checked in the e-filing portal. There was no upload. Department has not put any assessment on. On 4th of January, I came back. I am seeing that there is a document uploaded dated 31st of December. He was very upset. He said, Abhishek, I'm promising you on my mother that nothing was there. I checked at 11.55 on 31st of December. There was no order which was uploaded. On 4th of January, they have uploaded. I have not got any communication of the order also. So I am telling you that you can upload, but this is a practical challenge. I have mentioned it. I gave this specific case as an example to the Principal Chief Commissioner. I said, this is happening. So please make, I made a request that all communications, all notices, everything has to go both to the primary contact and the secondary contact. If you do not send to both, then it does not serve adequate service of notice. I have made a request. I'm hoping that we see an update of this soon, that uh, it is implemented successfully. Next. See, Rajamanikam, sir. Whether all the cases will go to the review unit before finalized? Very good question, sir. You see, you saw that there were four units. So we all thought whether every single case will go to all the units. This is not required. Only when the assessment unit or the NEAC, whenever either of them deem it required, then only the case will go to every unit or into a specific unit at all. If I don't have any doubt in capital gains, if the assessing unit or assessment unit or assessing officer himself, he is a capital gains expert, why he has to make a reference to a capital gain unit? Not required at all. If I am someone who can draft the assessment order well, I need not make a referral to a review unit. If there is no verification that needs to be done, no need to go to the verification. So only in specific cases will the reference to the units be made. But coming to the review unit, I think that is one very, very important unit. My view is, I personally feel if the department want to be serious about review unit, almost every order has to go to the review unit. Only then they can ensure the quality of the orders. But as discussed with the principal commissioner yesterday, I am telling you that he has told me not every unit, not every case will go to the review unit. The NEAC will decide which orders have to go to the review unit. CS Aravanan, any assessment scheme with scrutiny notices and correspondence be issued to secondary mail ID. I think this is the same thing. Same question that we had discussed. Uh, currently, for some reason, it is not going. We have requested it has to go to both IDs. Sound answer. Primary mail ID is seldom checked. Just created for registration by CA. <laughs> Correct, sir. I know it's a practical issue that you are saying. That is why I am saying repeatedly, put the client's email ID. Put yours as a secondary contact. No problem. All notices received in secondary mail ID will be swiftly noted and responded. I agree, sir. And that is why I specifically requested that it should be sent. See, Ramu, if any one of the e-assessment proceedings is not followed, will it amount to invalid assessment order? It's an excellent question, sir, that you are asking. So I told you that so many units are there. So if as an assessment unit, I am failing to make a reference to a technical unit, for capital gains issue or accounting standard issue. Will it be an invalid assessment order? Now, now is the very, very important point what I'm telling you. As far as the assessee is concerned, or as far as the auditors or advocates, you and I are concerned, we only interact with the NEAC. We do not even know there is an assessment unit, verification unit, review unit, technical unit. We don't know. All that we know is there is income tax, means NEAC. We are not aware of any of the flowchart things that we discussed. That we are to know what is the procedure. But as an SSE, he does not interact with anybody else other than the NEAC. So if an assessment unit does not make reference to some other unit, then we cannot say you should have made a reference. You have not made to that unit. 
you have no business talking about units if you want the opportunity to be provided and they have not given you the opportunity you can make that as a mention saying i asked for opportunity to be provided they have not given me a chance i wanted these details to be examined they have not examined it so what do i do in this case we will take another example we are all from tamil nadu here in tamil nadu we all know that agricultural income you have you have adangal and chitta adangal and chitta is in what language always it is going to be in tamil only whatever whatever uh, place in tamil nadu you go to even chennai all the documents are in tamil only so therefore if the case gets posted to a delhi assessing officer officer and uh, even the icai if any of you have called our icai delhi even if you talk in english they will talk in hindi only so if it is going a case is getting posted to assessing officer and the language of your documents are in tamil then how do you expect that assessing officer to understand so practical scenario so in this what will happen they have to make a reference to a verification unit they have to make a reference to a translator which will be done by a verification unit so they will translate the document from tamil to english and then it will be put before the assessee to check if the translation is correct suppose translation instead of saying that you have purchased the property for 10 lakh rupees he says you have purchased the property for 50 crore rupees how will you check whether it is correct or not suppose it's a agricultural land and he translates it saying that it is non agricultural the entire purpose of translation is lost because the what the document says is not reflected therefore assessee will also have a opportunity to check and when it goes to some other unit like this and there are going to be practical difficulties like this definitely there will be a reference made to that unit and you can always ask for the opportunity to check but you cannot say they should have referred to this unit they should have referred to technical unit they have not done that we have no business asking that our interaction is only with the nec ca vk subramani sir without taking prior approval from jcid how a survey is conducted under section 133a good question sir so this is a very important point where now there will be lot of transfers that will happen the powers will be vested to the central circle and in the central circle there will be a joint commissioner that person will approve so that's all earlier it was being done under your jurisdiction non central circle whatever corporate non corporate body were in that person over there the joint commissioner over there he used to approve now it is going to be done by a joint commissioner in the central circle that is the only change here pargavi ma'am Sir, whether the pending appeals also with CIT will be transferred to e-assessment? Good question, Parkavi ma'am. So as I told you, all pending assessments where assessment order is not passed will be now transferred to the e-assessment scheme. It will go to the NEAC. Uh, ma'am is asking about appeals. This is an excellent question. Because many appeals are still pending. As it stands, as it stands, no procedures have been laid down for the e-appeals. They have said that they have set a cut-off date of twenty-fifth of September. 20th of 25th of september is the cut off date for the e appeals so if you are able to represent your case before your cat appeals and get an order passed by 25th of september then by all means the you do not need e appeals but suppose your case extends beyond 25th of september ladies and gentlemen it will go for e appeals you have to do the entire appeal process again so remember that date 25th of september that is the cut off date for your e appeals so if you have any appeal cases for cit appeals ensure you finish the case by 25th of september that may look a uh, little difficult given the current corona and lockdown situation in fact in chennai also they are not allowing anybody inside and uh, this is another issue that i raised i said that you should allow us to at least have like this a video conference currently i am doing itit cases every day we are having itit cases in chennai not only in chennai across india itit cases are happening still during lockdown it is happening the same webex platforms that we are using today we are using webex and itit cases are happening but at cit appeals level they don't have any webex they don't have zoom things so i said you cannot submit everything by paper sometimes you want to explain the case also allow us to do it through webex we don't know whether they are going to implement that now we don't know under e appeals also whether webex will be there we still have no clarity on the same but as it stands to answer your question ma'am by 25th of september 25th of September, you have to finish your cases. If you do not finish the case, it will go to the E appeals mode. Next question is from Shekhar sir. What about Section 148 cases for the assessment year 2013-14? Sir, 
sir uh, there is no segregation made for which assessment or nothing all pending cases everything will be transferred to e assessment assuming the reopening itself is invalid in your case they have reopened beyond a period of 6 years or rather they have not complied with the timelines but they have reopened that assessment also will be transferred to e assessment you can represent to the e assessment unit saying that it is a open reopening is invalid but whatever the assessment here whatever cases are there everything with immediate effect has been transferred to e assessment so all your pending cases have gone i told you i gave you a ex extraneous situation where you have gone for 11 hearings assessment order is pending assessing officer has heard everything he is about to pass the assessment order but lockdown came so he did not pass so it's still pending for him to come back from the lockdown even in that case it is going to go to the e assessment unit so no exceptions pa rajendran pending assessment due to survey issue is it manual or e assessment so this is a good question i honestly i don't have any answer to it because where it is pending due to survey issue my view is it will still be done physically they will transfer it to the physical assessing officer uh, it i don't think it should go to e assessment but if the survey report has already been given there is a gray area we still don't know whether it will go to e assessment or it will be done manually my view is based on the discussion so far anything relating to survey it should be done physically it will go to the central circle probably they will notify which central circle jurisdiction is going to handle your case and you will get a notice from them you can ask if it is given to e assessment you can definitely raise a point in that case rajendran sir saying it is a survey case it should be done physically so there is a ground for appeal for you suppose they pass a e assessment order you can go and appeal say that it is a survey case it has to be done manually only they will quash the order you can win the case maybe no survey also will be done in your case the entire survey will be dropped whatever is found say seshadri balaji sir the present system of assessment only one officer to decide the case whether it is correctly assessed or not but in e assessment it is found around four officers come and uh, communicate before passing the order whether it is possible to come to complete the assessment in time and part of the department very good practical questions ashadri sir and this is a answer a question commonly i get asked now the timeline for completion of assessment is within 12 months 12 months from the end of the assessment year the uh, department has to complete the assessment there is no change in that timeline so assuming you are assessing officer or your assessment unit they are making a reference to each of this unit and it extends beyond 12 months then I, for you it is a huge boon you say time bar the case and you can win the case you can win the case easily but as i told you it is not compulsory that reference has to be made to all the units it is a optional at the e assessment or uh, sorry by at the assessment unit or the nec they have to decide whether it has to go to a particular unit so not all cases will go in my view i think the timelines will still be complied with it should not be a problem in case it is not complied with excellent for you please go and appeal and win the case sir last date uploading is permitted sir currently permitted in some cases you are talking about the e mail assessment scheme please do not get confused with the e assessment if you are assessee was part of e assessment scheme maybe i don't know your case is exception every case that i have seen if they say submit within 15 days in 15 days window closed you cannot submit you cannot submit under e mail assessment you could submit they used to give 15 days time sometimes after 2 months also i have submitted they have accepted also so there was no problem under the old scheme under e assessment 15 days means 15 days so after 15 days you will not be able to submit see as that we have a case where department has not sent a email communication for the first notice they have just uploaded it in the e proceeding portal while we check for form 26 as likely we have seen that time not time that notice and time has expired department then again raised a second notice by saying that you have not responded to the previous notice the second notice was duly served by email what to do in this case excellent question cs sudar and again i have handled this case and this is a point that i have raised i raised this i raised this before the uh, finance ministry last week i raised it before the principal chief commissioner day before yesterday also both uh, both of this is a practical issue where many cases department are uploading the document but no email communication received by the ssc i i stated that you must serve in some cases we have 300 400 assessees each assessee every day we cannot log into the portal and check every day whether new order has come whether new notice has come it is impractical therefore communication must be sent be it sms be it email some way communication has to be sent to 
to the assessee. This is a point that I've raised. Department are saying that as per law, they showed me actually the principal chief commissioner, he showed me one section. He says, uh, look at this section. It says uploading and portal also is enough. I said, okay, sir, you can say the act says that. Think practically whether you yourself, your own PAN number, you log in every day and check the e-filing portal, whether something is there, you will not do it. Assessees cannot be expected to log in and check every time. It is impractical. So therefore, I have stated that it must, you must send the communication. If you do not send the communication, it is not service. And the thing is, uh, Siddharth, to answer your question again, suppose you have a case like this, since you have said that you have a practical case. And, and let's assume they have passed a best judgment or they have said that you have not responded to notices. On appeal, definitely the appellate authorities will listen to you. I have handled, uh, I have seen many cases in IT18, little bit more complex than this also, where they have said you give the SSE opportunity. Do not simply do this. They will send the case back to the assessing officer. It may even send to a physical officer. You may be benefited by this. So definitely file an appeal in case it's an uh, adverse order that is being passed. See, yeah, Ashok uh, Durey Sami has asked, what is the chance that my English and submissions is misinterpreted by AO and the weightage of AO's language? Very, very practical question and it's an excellent question. And this is why when I told you, take up appeals very, very seriously. I do think this is going to happen. I do think that there are going to be a lot of cases. There are going to be a lot of situations where misinterpretation will happen especially up north, my experience is many officers are there who have difficulty following even English. They have difficulty following English, let alone some assessees or some authorized representatives. They may represent in broken English or not clarity or, you know, how some, th some things that how we talk in English also in South is different from how they talk in the same English up north or abroad. So therefore, communication gap is bound to be there. Because of that, adverse orders will definitely be there. That is why repeatedly I kept saying appeals is a huge area now. By not going on appeal, we are doing a disservice for the client. Even if there's a merit in the addition, there are a lot of chances that you can win the case on appeal. At least, even if there's merit in addition, if you go on appeal, you might get the case sent back to a physical officer sitting in Tirupur or sitting in Salem or sitting in Erod. Then in that case, at least you can fight out the case physically. You can explain the case physically. At least for that worth it, it's worth it to going on appeal. So take up appeals very, very seriously. This what you are saying, misinterpretation is going to be a huge issue. And I'm 100% sure there will be many orders where, where there will be misinterpretation. See, yeah, Ashok sir, even if I'm able to scan and upload, IT site will reject. Excellent point. This is again one more point that I have raised, where you're scanning and uploading documents, there is a limitation. Maximum 10 files only I can upload. Each file cannot exceed 5 MB. Sometimes my sale, sale deed itself for certain houses, it will run into 26, 30 MB. It's impossible for me to upload it. So this is a practical scenario where we have said, if there is a situation like this, department should allow, like Google Drive, they should allow us to upload something. If not, at least ask the physical person. If the case is in Salem, ask an officer who is sitting in Salem to do the case. If it is Chennai, ask an officer in Chennai to verify the documents in this case. So we have made a request. It remains to be seen what the department do about it. There is still a gray, gray area here. I think once they realize practically it is a challenge, definitely they will change this. Seshadri sir, again, by the way, is there any possibility that the services of CAs will be used in the department in places of such assessment unit? Good question, sir. Whether it will happen in assessment unit, definitely not. But you have the technical unit now. And a few years back, uh, the current government announced that horizontal uh, entry into the government jobs into uh, you know irs or ias may be allowed so therefore if they follow through with it then i can see that experts role may be there in the technical units being a chartered accountant who specializes in maybe transfer pricing you may have a role to play in the technical unit so as it stands there is no such thing but in the future definitely i think it will happen Karan answer in e-assessment scheme will scrutiny notices and correspondences be issued to the secondary email ID, that of the authorized representative. Sir, we have already discussed this. Uh, thing. And skip this question. CA Jairam, is the restriction of limiting to 10 cases per email ID applicable to the secondary email also? No, sir, there is no restriction to secondary. It is only for primary. CA Ashok, for AY 2017-18, 
first year of reassessment, the AO was hearing me for the earlier year in person. For the same assessees, the emails are never received. The AO just says, I have proof for sending the same 144 was passed. Sir, go on appeal. Immediately go on appeal on this case. You will win the case in appeal. As I already told you, many scenarios are there where email is not sent. It is uploaded late. Possible for assessee to know communication has come at all. Definitely go on appeal. You will win the case in appeal. Ruganandam, sir. Whether limited scrutiny in the case of NEAC proceedings, is it possible to convert the same into full scrutiny? Sir, excellent question. I'll tell you an example of a case that I had. It was picked up in limited scrutiny. What happened? They picked up in limited scrutiny because ASC had sold a capital asset during the year, huge property sold. So it was picked up for that purpose. So he is checking. He said, uh, okay, get me your bank statements. He gave the bank statement. He said, get me sale deed, everything given. Then while seeing the bank statement, he said, what are all these receipts that are there in the bank statement? Sir, it is my business receipt, sir. How you purchase this land, sir? Whatever business we have, that only. Oh, give me what business do you have? Sir, this is PNL, you can see, sir. PNL, these are your sales details. Now oh, give me the sales receipts. Sir, you want the invoices? Yes, yes, bring me all the invoices. So brought the invoices. Oh, okay, okay. How, how do you do your business? Is it a manual business or machine intensive? Sir, manual, sir. How much salary you are paying? Sir, so much salary. You are paying PFESI, yes. Get the PFESI details, sir. We got sir. So what, how many employees you have? Sir, we have 120 employees. You get me the salary slips. Sir, you want salary slips? Yes, I want for these 10 employees, get me all 12 months salary slips. Sir, I got for these three employees alone, two months salary slip is not there. For these employee alone, two months salary slip is not there. Immediately, he makes addition of all the income in your PGBP. He disallows my entire salary. Now, question is asked. It was picked up on limited scrutiny. Where it started? Immovable property, sale of immovable property. From there, where it has gone? Sale of immovable property to bank statement, bank statement to source, from source to sale, from sale to expenses, expenses to salary, salary to pay slip, pay slip not given, addition slip. Can he do that at all? Can a limited scrutiny do all this? If you want to do all this, you can convert a limited scrutiny into a full scrutiny. You have to get the appropriate approvals from your principal commissioner. You can convert your minimal scrutiny into a full scrutiny, no problem. However, but under a limited scrutiny itself, you cannot do all this. Coming to e-assessment, this is one more submission that we have made from our end and the department has been receptive, nothing has been codified. We have said that under e-assessment scheme, since the volume of documents may be high, it must be restricted to the issues of the appeal. You should not start making roving queries. You should not ask, bring me this, bring me that, etc. It will put the SSC and the assessing officer, uh, sorry, the authorized representative at a discomfort. I have to scan hundreds and thousands of documents and upload. So therefore, we have said that we request it to be limited to the issue at hand. It still remains to be seen, sir. To answer your question, limited scrutiny can be converted. Even in e-assessment, if the situation arises, I'm sure the department will convert it to a full scrutiny if they have the proof. But we have submitted that limit your discussions to the whatever issue is at hand. Ashok Turei Swami, sir. Why new edu, edu, edu policy? Edu policy, you mean education policy, sir? I don't know. I don't understand your question, sir. Maybe you can just reword it and send it. See, Satya Narayana, sir, in your opinion, whether the new faceless assessment will succeed? Uh, Satya Narayan, sir, I do think there is merit to the scheme. I think there are good aspects, but I think there are a lot of practical challenges also. But I think it is a structural reform. Uh, and in my view, there are some aspects definitely I'm not a fan of, especially the limit in uploading documents, etc. It's a big restriction. It's a big restriction. There are going to be a lot of issues where there are going to be disagreements or misunderstandings. Someone rightly, beautifully put it. People will not understand what you are trying to communicate. You may not understand what they are trying to communicate. So all of these are going to be challenges. But having said all of this, my opinion is immaterial because it is here to stay. It is here to say, I think the government and based on whatever I have interacted with the finance ministry, they have been very serious. They've been very serious about implementing it. This has been a pet project for them. They have been planning it for two years. So definitely this is going to be there to stay. And uh, well, even if it is not successful, they may modify it a little bit. They may modify it a little bit. But I think there are a lot of merits to the faceless assessment. It is only a procedural challenges that we may have. 
they will work around the procedural challenges this is here to stay and i think it will be there for the long run that is why i am saying we are definitely going to face a lot of difficulties because of this take up appeals very very seriously ashok sir uh, assessment year 1718 1433 was predetermined 115 bbe case if beyond 25th september department will go on rampage yes sir absolutely that is why i keep saying in my view cit appeals whether even though it is appellate authority 90% of the cases practically that we have seen that cit appeals they are not very effective or they are more favorable to the department so therefore itat is in, ends up being the last bastion of your any uh, uh, you know resort for us any benefit that we are getting out we are getting all the way from the itat only so many cases that i am doing they are all handled by very leading auditors from uh, the entire tamil nadu region and i must say especially selam and tirupur and i think some of them are part of today's discussion also many leading auditors are happening it is not that the auditors are not capable of fighting the case it is just that the cit appeals very often they just confirm whatever the assessing officer says or they do not want to the see they have their own targets they have their own requirements so because of that the purpose of cit appeals itself is being diluted that is why maybe department also they feels having e appeals will be better they feel so therefore my view is even if you lose at the cit appeals case go to the itat if you are not confident refer it to someone definitely at the itat level you will win the case i am seen so many cases where at cit level it has not worked out but at the itat level the case has been won very very easily very easily catr ramanathan sir communication you mean physical notice no sir hence for physical notice concept gone you will never get a physical notice unless it is a search case survey case or a international taxation case in all other cases no more physical only it will be done through your re assessment ca muruganandan sir there are cases where different high courts have held differently on the same issue where it is referred to a technical committee will it express opinion differently based on according to the state or in absence of finding by apex court very good question sir this is a Uh, whenever i am taking a session on appeals i usually cover this aspect because again when it comes to appeals many people ask me sir which case to i refer to in tamil nadu i am based out of tamil nadu there is a case in bombay high court that's in my favor there is a case bombay tribunal that's my favor can i refer to that decision you can definitely refer to the decision it will be used for persuasive guidance persuasive guidance normally as per law the jurisdictional high court decision is binding madras high court decision is binding on all assessees in madras see even if your assessing officer is based out of delhi in my view he has to follow whatever is the decision in madras for you because your assessee is based out of tamil nadu whatever madras high court case is that that alone he should follow so definitely this is again one gray area where i have seen it even at the itat level i have seen it at the itat level where my assessee is from chennai i am representing the case from chennai and the judge who is sitting in the itat for that case happened to be a judge who was from delhi he was transferred to the chennai itat he refused to agree with my view i said there is a madras high court decision sir it is binding jurisdictional decision is there that is binding on the assessee so you should not disturb but he wanted to take a different stance he said i want to go as per the delhi high court so very often when we go on appeal to the itat it might sound like a uh, like a silly but when we appear at itat this is what the experience says someone who goes you will refer to the madras high court decision that's not how i prepare i prepare based on who the judge is so i see what decisions he likes i see what, what how he has passed orders recently if he is from delhi whether he has been following the case if it is a capital gains let's take the 54f case that we discussed 54f what is the delhi high court stance has he done any cases which are the were done on similar issues what is his stand over there all of the homework you have to do you have to know who the judge is you have to know his nature all of this if you have only effectively you can represent a case at the itat it's a open court it's a open court all orders are passed in the open court so therefore you must know the judge you must know their nature that's where the experience comes in at the itat level so therefore to answer your question sir my view is that the same jurisdictional decision should be binding if the assessee is from that jurisdiction having said that i have seen practical challenges to that even at the itat level the level itself i am seeing so definitely again this is a prime scenario where your assessing officer is based out of delhi 
more likely that he will follow only the Delhi orders. He will not see the Madras High Court order. So even if it is referred to technical unit, etc., he will naturally, he may have some targets. If he has the targets, he will follow the Delhi order, which is adverse to you. He will not follow your favorable order. You have to go on appeal and fight it out. That is the only thing. Ramanathan, sir. E-appeal e means only appeal up to department appeal or even ITAT and above. No, sir, only CIT appeals. ITAT not yet covered. I don't know if they'll cover ITAT later. Currently, ITAT not covered because ITAT does not come under the finance ministry. It comes under the law and uh, it comes under law. It does not come under finance. So ITAT is constituted by law. That is why repeatedly I keep saying, even if the CIT appeal gives the adverse order, go to the ITAT. ITAT is not bound by the CBDT. They, there are cases where I have seen where the ITAT has held. I don't have to follow CBDT circular. CBDT circular is for you to follow. As ITAT, I can still overlook the CBDT circular. It is only for persuasive information. ITAT I have held in many cases that I have seen. So therefore, ITAT still remains a physical uh, appeal. Shekhar sir, what about trust assessments? Trust also under e-assessment only sir. No change there. CITR Ramanathan, keep checking emails for all clients. Is it practical? Is there any other way to technically automate? No, sir. Email is the best way to see. If you automate it, chances are there you may miss it. So my view is check all your emails. Uh, ask your RC to forward it. Maybe have a staff, get uh, some BCom graduate, somebody like that, an employee. All they have to do is see the PAN number or the name of whatever the communication has done and then open that file, check what happened in that case. That's all. So my view is emails is the best way. SMS also today, you get so many SMSs. Uh, all advertisements are coming. You will miss the SMS that's coming from the department. At least email is a bastion where not too much spam is there or the department it's or rather the, your email provider itself, they circulate and they remove the spam. So therefore that email is the best way for you to get the communication in my view. See, Nitya has asked, e-assessment failed to log in and reply date has expired, recourse for this action. Maybe in the next notice when you are getting, you can reply. Before they pass the order, you will be receiving a show cause notice. At the time, you can mention. At the time of receiving the show cause notice, you can mention saying no opportunity given. And at that time, you can also, even if that loses, you can go on appeal and win the case. So again, if you have seen, there's a common trend to my answers, where if it does not work out, appeal. So this is very, very important. I'm repeatedly saying, take up appeals very, very seriously. I think we have covered all the questions. Any more questions are there? Question has come. How adjournment is viewed under e-assessment and uh, like uh, filing answers partly? I think this is an excellent question, very practical question. And I think many of us have questions of this sort. Commonly, we have seen that uh, as auditors, we take adjournments very often. Many times it's at the end of the assessee. He does not give the details to you on time. Uh, there are various mistakes that he makes or uh, for whatever reason, you're not able to give it. He used to take a lot of adjournments because it was physical, no problem. We will tell the officers that tomorrow I'll come. Sir, I have an emergency in my home. All of this was being done. However, no adjournments you can still take adjournments you can under e-assessment also you can request for adjournment however beyond a certain time if you do not respond within the number of days or you take too many adjournments definitely they will pass a 144 order ci satish kumar sir is there any help desk facility available for nac like gst yes sir excellent thing this is one more thing i had specifically raised to, to the department to the finance ministry i sent a suggestion saying there must be a e-seva kendra which is established to help processes or to help auditors. Many cases, some people may not even be able to scan documents. I may not have a scanner in my office. I have to scan 100, 200 documents for the NEAC. So what will I do? So I said there should be a e-seva kendra and uh, I'm very thankful that they have taken into cognizance. So there will be a e-seva kendra established for the purposes of e-assessment where you can upload documents, etc. Now, I will continue to take questions. The reason uh, I am just stopping for a second and I am sharing my screen is because uh, through my PPT, I had to cover changes in the ITR also. I had to, I wanted to discuss a lot of case laws. I had many case laws here which is given practical issues and assessment that you can use, be it 147.
quality assessment also you can use all of these case laws many slides are there almost uh, 60 70 slides with many case laws i have put over here even capital gains issues i'm very happy to share the case laws i'm sharing my mobile number here my whatsapp number is here you can see mobile i'm just highlighting it i will make it big for the benefit of all my mobile number is here this is my whatsapp number also just drop me a message in whatsapp i'm more than happy to share my entire ppt with you i'm more than happy to share it with you you can feel free i will give you my uh, ppt in full form so you can use whatever case laws are over here for any of your cases it's covering a span of pgpp cases capital gains cases many things are covered in my uh, ppt here with the citation everything is there a lot of practical issues so you can all use that just drop me a message in whatsapp i'll send it immediately to anybody who wants the presentation are there any more questions so i think uh, we have covered uh, everything are there any more questions does anybody want to ask any questions also you can unmute and ask also sindhu sir virtual ma please send the presentation to the branches they can discuss i will send it to the branches also sir anybody maybe some people might want to discuss the issues also with me you can feel free to drop me a message on whatsapp i am just sharing my I don't know if i shared it i am just sending my mobile number yes. so if anybody wants to discuss also you can feel free to drop the yeah. one more question yes 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 please tell me sir i am saranga rajan one more yes, question sir. yes sir what will happen if the cross objections are there in the appeal level you know you mean at e appeal sir during e appeals yes if cross objections generally at the cit level you don't have a concept of cross objections because the department does no. not have when there is a remand reports are there we need cross yes, remand report okay you mean reg yes rejoinder you can still submit there is no change there where a remand report is given remand report may be given even under e appeals Uh, once the remand report is given, they will give their response. Whoever is the assisting officer or whoever is the assessment unit, they will give their response. And you, as an assessee, you can submit your rejoinder. Whatever response they are coming, you can submit your rejoinder. That does not change. That they cannot change. That it's a principle of natural justice. Whether it is E appeal, E assessment, all that does not matter. They should still give you the opportunity to represent. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Abhishek. Yes, sir. I, I am A. Murugananthan from Erode. Yes, yeah, Murugananthan, sir. Yeah, I continue my question. You know, there are occasions. Say, say, for instance, earlier in the case of yes. us, Kerala High Court uh, stated that depreciation is not allowable. Delhi High Court said it is allowable. So, yes. assuming that this this situation continues and the case is referred to the technical committee, will the yes. technical committee give its finding in favour of the SSC for a Kerala SSC? And against the SSC in Kerala case of a Delhi SSC, so the same same national e-governance is giving two different views on the same uh, on two different SSCs in two different states by the same technical committee. Is it a paradoxical question? I mean, uh, sir, the situation is you are right, sir. Normally, as they say, when you are becoming auditor, they say approach everything with skepticism, professional skepticism. Like that only, I am approaching this technical unit also. my view they should take a different chance if your assessee is from tamil nadu that's chance if they are from cochin one chance if they are from delhi one chance they, that's how they should do it but knowing how department functions normally whatever is best for department only that case they will refer to knowing the assessee we will always take whatever is best for assessee that is how we operate that is how they operate we don't know how the technical unit will be we still don't know because we have not yet seen too many cases referred to them We, the teams have also not fully been established now only it's in the process so therefore it remains to be seen sir to be answering your question it remains to be seen it's a gray area even i cannot answer sir. yeah thank you any more questions are there you can feel it does not have to be related to e assessment any questions you may have pertaining to the itr forms or capital gains or any other issues also i think i am open to discuss so you can feel free to discuss even assessment procedures okay great i think we seem to have covered almost everything okay ma'am ramu sir any more questions have come no 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 we are online sir 
Ambers, any other questions? Are you, sir. Sir, are you able to hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Some nice news is also coming, sir. <laughs> sir, are we discussing new ITR changes? Uh, see, it was a two-hour session. So you have to discuss. Yeah, I have. I have my presentation ready. That is going on for another one and a half hours. I have no problem. I think members may be a little tired. What I will do is I will share that PPT also. And uh, if required, we can schedule one more session. I'm more than happy to discuss the uh, sure, idea sir. changes. We'll uh, schedule one more uh, session. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Namo, sir. I think. Namo, sir. I don't know. Namo, sir. Simbolika, I'm going to tell you. Sir. 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 Yes, 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 sir. Tell me, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir, for presenting this talk. I cannot hear, sir. The music is very loud. Somebody should mute, Shaker, sir. Yeah, now you are able to hear, sir. Yes, yes, now clear, sir. Sir, in case of senior citizens with more than 80 years, there is no. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sir, uh, one, second, one, second, one second, one second, sir. Ramu, sir, uh, host, unmute, mute, mute, all, mute, sir. mute, all, mute, 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 Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, actually. Oh, good. 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 Yes, yes, sir. Sir, present the 17 penalty pending line and pending, sir. Other than yes, but the one that I even like to ask me, sir. That's again a good question, sir. In a currently, penalty, but the other way, so they have not mentioned ah, penalty. About penalty. Is there still a gray area? I, at least before, day before yesterday, before uh, Prime Minister announced the game, penalty was still going to be done manually. The penalty was still okay, going okay. to be done manually, but if you Basically, there is nothing stopping them from doing penalty through e-assessment. Whatever methods are in place today, the same thing can be done for penalty. So my view is penalty will also be done under e-assessment. Uh, sir, can I ask a question, sir? Yes, 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 Rajamanikam, sir. Yes, 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 sir. I think it's still not required. Yes, sir. And there's some refunds are there, and they are very old. It's very difficult to get this. Uh, hey, I don't linking. think it's required, sir. I, there's no change there. I think they can force them. Thank you. Years. In fact, Thank uh, you, sir. tell Thank you a you. practical Thank scenario. My grandfather, when we applied for Aadhaar, our Kairege Varla, he did not get registered. So I don't think it's practical. They may not force it. Thank you, Mr. The same. This is scrutiny of senior citizen. Because of not, I am the country to say we can't do this. Sir, senior citizen, and the this scrutiny is better. I have told you. You guys are always there. No, you guys are computer level. I am not telling you. So it is not that it is. Uh, Even for the senior citizen, we have to come to see us, sir. Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, sir, I thank all the chairmen for joining with us and making this session wonderful and with a lot of uh, participation. When we come to presentation or representation, the thing is different when it's faceless, sir. In faceless, only word, facts and documentation speaks and not the face. Yes, sir. Faceless does not mean that experience and expertise will become valueless, sir. It's only the experience and expertise makes a representative how to present when to present where to present and what to present sir yes sir it's only cas have the opportunity to learn and gain the experience and expertise 
now also the ca curriculum is made based on practical work approach and case study sir yes sir we are we at the branch level is organizing a series of webinars uh, on faceless assessment and appeal sir next month we will be organizing two uh, uh, two webinars sir one is on uh, appeal before the cit and another is in on appeal before the idit sir two yes. eminent speakers will come and address on this uh, topic sir in yes. any other uh, further proceedings required that we will arrange sir yes sir sure. dear member presentation of facts in the return of income has its, its own impact in the scrutiny assessment similarly presentation of facts in the assessment proceedings has its impact in the appellate proceedings before the cit appeals and idat uh, it's only cas can prepare the return of income in an analytical way it's only cas can pre scrutinize the financial statements don't assist unqualified people there is big responsibility cast in the e proceeding please respect and make use of it we have a lot of really uh, in the coming appellate uh, stages our uh, secretaries are also requested all members to practice appeal proceedings please make use of it sir i thank all i thank once again i thank our secretary sir thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you all thank you sir thank you for coming thank you ramu sir thank you bala murugan sir and uh, thank you all thank you sir thank you, thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.